What's up, everybody? This is the Behind the Agency podcast. I'm Andrew Johnson. And I'm Chandler Welling, and we've got Joe Rosa in the house from Austin, Texas. Welcome. Hey, guys. Yeah, Glad so to have you. Thank you. How is the weather compared to Austin? I know Austin's like, what, 105, 110? It's been, uh, it's been in that range, 105, 110 yeah. for the past week or two. I did, I did see a meme the other day. It said, uh, if you want to know what it's like living in Texas, just take a shower, don't dry off, and put your clothes on. And uh, <laughs> that's pretty much what it's like. So, it's, uh, You know, it, it was nice because it took a long time to get hot this year. Like June yeah. was actually like, wow, this is okay. Well, yeah. It's going to be a good year. And then August just came and just destroying everybody. It's so hot again. And yeah. Looking forward to fall. You know, For September, sure. October, yeah. really good months. Same. For the humidity to die down. So. Yeah. So, so like we always say, we like to keep these podcasts short and sweet for you guys. So um, I'm just going to hop right in. And uh, Joe, th- um, you've got Ecom Bash coming up uh, in Austin, Texas yep. um, in October, I believe it is, correct? Yeah, October 8th through 10th. Awesome. And so that's uh, this is basically a conference for uh, a lot of the professionals in the e-com, e-com world uh, space. Uh, if you could kind of break down what prompted you or what motivated you uh, behind starting this this conference, that'd be kind of a good place to start for yeah. some context. Yeah, sure. First of all, sometimes I, I wonder why I had this crazy idea because I you always kind of underestimate the amount of effort that it takes to pull off something that meets your expectations. Mm. Uh, for me personally, I've been in e-commerce, uh, kind of one of the old guys in this industry since 1997. Uh, various companies, whether like launching DSW.com and Harley mm. Davidson, work with brands like uh, Organifi and Calvin Klein, There's a lot of different brands. Yeah. And so I've gone to a lot of these events over the years and there's always been something I didn't like about them, whether it was you know, too much of a sales pitch or mm. vendors, uh, doing a demo of their product, you know, you spend a lot of money to go to a conference and you leave, and it's like you have a bunch of, a bunch of advertising, yeah. you know, documentation. It's like it didn't really learn a whole lot. Sure. You know, so that's all I've heard about Tony Robbins events is that they're just giant sales. Pitches. Just a giant upsell. A lot yeah. of those. You, yeah. you hear even like the Russell Brunson and those guys, like, oh, you just got to get people to the back of the room to sign up and upsell them. Upsell. Yeah. Them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, you have an event to teach people. Yeah, you know, for sure. Yeah. It's not a, it's not, everything's not a funnel. Just, yeah. You know, what's wrong with just giving back some of your experience sure. over the years and bringing a good, a really great group of, of speakers yeah. that can share uh, their experience yeah. to help people who kind of where I was 20 years ago or where other people might, might right. need some help. That's awesome. And I feel like, I feel like we see a lot of that in our industry, um, especially the last few years is like just seeing a lot of people who are really passionate about providing value because uh, that's really kind of like how we started this podcast yeah well, was really just to provide I'm glad value. You say that because yeah. it's easy for us to get into the spot where we're just like constantly shitting on the bad part of the industry but to that point there's so many people that have been creating communities with good intentions and giving sure. back and leading with value first and so yeah i'm looking forward to the conference man yeah, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. it's uh the, the goal it's a three-day event and it's supposed to be kind of covering end-to-end e-commerce. Mm-hmm. And I kind of put together the sessions of like, okay, here's what I think would be valuable to somebody at the beginning, you know, launching a new business all the yeah. way through. We have an IP attorney there, uh, kind of talking about protecting your brand and like little things wow. that you don't hear yeah. at a lot of these other events, you know, uh, sourcing products all the way through to fulfillment and building operations at your, your customer care team. Yeah. Uh, day three is all on marketing. So it's kind of, we've, we've got sessions ranging from SEO and YouTube and Facebook, um, and, and one of my favorites is going to be on content. Let's you go. Know, uh, we have a great. Speaker. I think I know the guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah there's going to be. Uh, <laughs> I'm pumped, man. Hosting. I'm uh, pumped. Session. I'm taking this so seriously. Hired a speaker. It's my first speaking yeah. event. Okay. A speaking coach. Sorry, speaking coach. So I can. Uh, well, worst case scenario is like not being focused. So like yeah. she's she's aligning everything for me to like. Okay, how do you? get a um a hyper focused speech where yeah. you're you know relaying what you want yeah i mean you're a type seven so i can i can ramble on whatever for for forever and it so. might not be understood to the audience so no i think it'll be fun man and i'm, I'm honored to be a part of it oh, yeah. I'm yeah. glad you're going to be there it's, yeah i think content is such an important part of success for any ad you know more than any yeah. levers you push or bidding strategy or whatever if your content 
sucks, you're not going to convert. You for know, sure. So yeah. I'm excited to see what you have. So then. who is Ecom Bash for? Of course, people in e-commerce, but like, if you had to write out the perfect attendee, who is that person? Or does it range? Um, I think the goal has been that it is a range. And I've seen that from people that have been buying tickets so far. You know, new entrepreneurs who are starting a business or they're early in the stages of, of any, any kind of digital e-commerce business. I've got, uh, it's probably about 20% of that type of person. Mm. Another 20% are agencies, people that work with a lot of other clients that are just going to go and listen and probably do some networking. Yep. Um, but then uh, beyond that, I guess the other 60% have been uh, businesses that are probably in that million dollar and up range that have, have d- had some success in the in e-commerce and they're looking to kind of get to that next level of learning what it takes to kind of go the next step. Mm. Uh, yeah, so we've got some, some decent brands there. You know, we've got a, a good sponsor, uh, several sponsors, but the title, like the title sponsor is Big Commerce and they really yeah, stepped up. Yeah, that's awesome. Mm-hmm. It's very cool. It kind of gave us some instant credibility. It's like yeah, not for just sure. some Joe guy put yeah. on a conference. <laughs> yeah, right, right. It's like, no, it's legit. They're going to be, you know, it's a really cool venue. Uh, Austin's a lot of fun. Yeah. We've got some cool events scheduled for, for the week. Uh, like a concert, going to host a concert on Wednesday night for people. Kind That's of a awesome. private open bar kind of thing. Just nice. It's, it's going to be about networking. Justin so Bieber, right? Just, well, <laughs> yeah. if, if we can sell out, you know, if I can raise enough money, we'll, we'll yeah. call the Biebs and see what we can <laughs> yeah, do. Let's do it, man. Shoot him a text. That's awesome. So, so I want to shift a little bit um, and make this practical for the content theme that I love so mm-hmm. dearly. So I want to ask you, Joe, what is your take on content in 2019? How are you seeing a shift, whether it's e-commerce or just digital advertising in general? What, what are you, what's your POV on content for 2019? Uh, I, th- I think it, it comes down to knowing your audience and knowing your customer uh, and, and kind of delivering what they expect, you know, good quality stuff. Uh, I mean, sometimes overproduced stuff might actually perform worse. Yeah. You know? Oh yeah. So we see that time and time again. Yeah. yeah. Don't spend, you know, don't build a TV commercial. Yeah. Right, right. Create content that people actually want to watch because, yep. you know, when a TV commercial comes on, you, you fast forward through it or you skip whatever. It's uh, good. So Our minds are trained to like, n- you know, skip over advertising. Oh, for sure. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you see a, an ad and you're just like, you know, like when a commercial comes on, you don't even know what's playing. Right. Yeah. Yeah, so nobody wants to be sold to. So yeah. it's, all about, it's all about that native feel, man. Yeah, and some, yeah. something yeah. On, on our end, working with so many different niches is what we, I feel like, have learned pretty quickly is that quality is really subjective, you know? And so, like you said, you really have to hit on what, what your market knows and mm-hmm. um, just focus on that because a lot of times we can get a little too uh, overzealous with the the production side of things because, yeah, you know, sure. we, we have it in our abilities to do it, so yeah, yeah. and it, we're passionate about it, so yeah. you kind of have to almost like not be selfish in a way and like think about your client's audience dude for sure yeah especially like as creators as mm-hmm. a you know uh, uh videography is is a passion of mine when i first started out I remember i would produce way too cinematic type content yeah and so like like you said joe it's like you want to you want to give your customers or your audience a good experience when they're viewing your content yeah, and so sure. a lot of that is just understanding yeah what type of content do they want to see and yeah yeah, yeah. They, they want to learn. People like to learn yeah. new things. Yeah. You know, just don't don't sell at them. You know, yeah. just talk to them and explain what you have. Yeah. And I think that's what seems to work the best uh, in my experience. And I'm sure you've probably seen similar things. Uh, it's interesting too. We're coming up on Q4. Yeah. Yep. And actually, the day you're speaking at the end at the event, if if you want to make a note of this, but it's going to be actually 50 days from Black Friday. Exactly 50 days. Wow. Okay. okay well, then I need to I need to work a theme into this. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah. I'm just kind of telling because that Thursday I did the math. I ran th- some website that tells you, and I'm like, oh wow, 50 days, perfect. Yeah. So you and I, just to be candid, like we we need to connect on. I have a few different topic ideas. Mm-hmm. So to that point, it could be, you know, the blue p- the content blueprint for Black Friday. Or it could be something like that no one talks about, which is like how organic effects paid. And so, I mean, we can mm-hmm. even talk about it right now on the podcast or even just like, sure, you know, yeah. later on is like, what would be the best value or, you know, the most practical for people there, um, you know, to what you just said. I feel like it would be kind of cool to do a, you know, a 50 days to Black Friday. What does that look like? Because last year we took a really interesting approach and I have to shout out Nick Shackelford for, for turning me on to this approach is is building max traffic and audience three Mm -hmm. weeks up to black friday we spent like 100k for one of our clients on just traffic ads 
which is scary as shit because you spend right. 100k and you you know the <laughs> ROI on that is like you it's know w- we 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 I think we made like 18k in revenue mm. you know there's three weeks which is like normally in that account we're turning four to five x top of funnel and so it's just really really scary but just having faith in the process so right. the goal was to then just spend all of a- another 100k or up to 100k uh, Black Friday week on just retargeting nothing but and we saw CPMs like eight yeah. nine bucks mm-hmm. eight bucks seven bucks six bucks literally so so low um on black friday and killed it i think we did three and a half million yeah i, th- I think we have the, the case studies up on our website as well yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. actually the black friday one's yep. up there yeah so it'll be something similar this year but it's going to be different with with cbo and i'm sure even you know thinking two three months ahead on yeah. a Facebook world means like that's oh, like a year's worth of change. Yeah, who knows? <laughs> CBO might like blow up in our face, yeah. and and we're yeah, they change their mind. And they budgets are at the ad level now. Who knows, man? Yeah. So well, I'm sure Facebook will have some outage plan that week, like they did last oh, year. Oh my gosh! So uh, it's gonna make it great. I don't know if anyone. I, mean, I don't have a huge audience, like in my personal. I probably have like 300 followers on Instagram, but my Instagram stories, I was just like. I made sure to document it because I was so stressed though. But I was like, this is kind of cool though. It's like, yeah. what people don't see, I was like literally in a bedroom <laughs> all night <laughs> because yeah, so uh, ads manager went down. What was the issue? You know, you couldn't publish anything, right? Yeah, you couldn't publish. You couldn't even turn things off, I don't think. So like wow. people were spending. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. People, l- luckily bad. for us, wow. I had waited to the last minute and we were going to launch. It was on um, it was on Tuesday that it went down. Mm-hmm. Um, and I was going to launch Tuesday like morning, mid-morning and it went down early morning but I wasn't able to launch until Wednesday, but I lost all of my drafts. I think I had oh. um, seven campaigns and it, uh, 200 <laughs> ad sets maybe. Oh, man. Seriously. Oh, yeah, and I had to just stay up all night long and work the next day. It was crazy, man. And everyone was in the same boat. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we're in different Facebook groups. That happened, um, like, what the hell? <laughs> that happened, too, um, this year again on, was it March, 4th of yeah. July? Was it March? Or? There was, well... I remember it was, it was around like a holiday. March 13th or something. Uh, I don't think it was a Friday, but I, I had this Friday the 13th thought in my head. But it was like when, because there was a time early in the year when CBOs were just like on fire, just like killing yeah, yeah. for everybody. And it's like, okay, so this is good. And then and we weren't running CBOs during that, by they the way. <laughs> we weren't, yeah. <laughs> but then this outage came on that, that day in March, and then it kind of never came back to the way it was before. So oh, it was, it was during um, like some of the hearings and stuff. L- literally, yeah. it was like it went... And the joke was that, like, they said it was, like, a technical <laughs> error, but, like, everyone's, like, dude, Facebook's, like, purging data or doing something, <laughs> you know? They're, like, trying to, like, put out fires for sure. And it was it was different ever since, seriously. Yeah. So. Weird. Anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah, so are you – you're giving a uh, talk at your own conference, I, I take it? Or is it just going to be, like, am. an intro? Yeah, I mean, it's uh – Whatever you want to call it. I, I call it a keynote because it's my yeah. conference, and I can call yeah. it that if I want. That's right. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. <laughs> no, I'm just uh, going to kind of talk about the – how I see the future of mm. e-commerce because looking back, like we're going into 2020. And so it's like, I was in e-commerce in the nineties and then, you know, zero and then to teens and now the twenties, like yeah, yeah. before it was cool. Four decades of e-commerce, you know, if I want to sound like I'm crazy, really That's crazy. <laughs> yeah. But it's really 22 years. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be kind of my take on the future, like what the next decade. Yeah. Of course, nobody really knows, but you kind of see some trends and you see sure. some things and obviously something's going to happen five seven years from now they'll innovate everything yeah right it's gonna be so much different to that point let's take it back what was your first e-commerce brand or website what was your first experience in the e-com world uh even back in college i built the first website for my university okay that's that's awesome that's That's cool i got in you know i went to school for political science and uh latin american studies and (laughs) i was like i have no hot topic right there (laughs) yeah yeah but I kind of enjoyed this internet thing, which was kind of new, you know, in 95. Uh, there were no courses, no anything to learn. So I kind of just was in the library teaching myself stuff every day. Uh, and kind of just after four years, I actually left early. I like mm. to say I was like LeBron. I left school early. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> I took, a, took a job with a company who, uh, a, a utility company in Columbus, Ohio. And they said that you can help us with this online bill pay basically that's what it was uh, letting people pay their their gas bills online um but you really need to focus on y2k because the yeah. end of the world's gonna come in, in at december 31st 1999 <laughs> i remember i remember it very yeah. well the companies i mean they couldn't find enough bodies to throw at that stuff so there was a lot of money getting spent on y2k and i just basically said i'll do it you know 
I'm not a good programmer. That was kind of my mm-hmm. early days, but I was like, but I really want to do this e-commerce thing. So that was it. You know, we built this thing where the very first iteration was uh, people could print out a form and write in their credit card information and like fax it back to a number. Like that was wow. the, the oh first gosh. way. That we did it. <laughs> and then there were people at the other end getting these faxes in and they're typing in because back then people th- actually thought that it was more secure to not enter your credit card into the website, you know, but, but to write it on a piece of yeah. paper and fax <laughs> it to a random oh stranger. <laughs> it's like, that wouldn't fly too well these no, days. No, no, not at all. But back then, I mean, it's kind of before, even before SSL and before like all the security, you know, PayPal. I, I got a note from PayPal the other day. It's like, you've been a member since uh, before it was called PayPal. Like it was oh, wow. Elon Musk's <laughs> company before. It was like, I forget, 2000. Musk, Musk money or something yeah. like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. X, I think it was called X something. Huh. But yeah, kind of from there, uh, worked with a couple of government agencies doing some online transactional things. You wouldn't think the government was at the cutting edge. Yeah. Um, And in fact, one boss of mine told me I shouldn't really waste my time with this internet thing. (laughs) Oh my gosh. It's kind of a fad. I don't think it's going to work. And I'm like, okay, Jerry. Yeah, I got you. (laughs) We'll see how that works out. (laughs) Uh, I think it's going to stick around though at this point. I'm kind of all on the internet. I think we'll we'll find out soon. (laughs) (laughs) For sure. Then just a lot of consulting over the years, a lot of different brands. Yeah. the first big break again was DSW. You know they had shoes, uh, shoe stores all over the country. But they hadn't, they weren't selling shoes online, and Zappos was already there, and so they were kind of trying to catch up. Yeah. Uh, so we built DSW.com to kind of compete with Zappos, but you could innovative things at the time, like you could return to the store. And yeah, you yeah, can, yeah. Uh, you know, eventually we had like pick up in store, so mm. tying in the inventory from uh, uh, the different locations and stuff. Yeah. That was and that was 2007. Um, and then I had the opportunity to go Harley Davidson in Milwaukee. They, they weren't really running e-commerce. They had like all their dealerships around the country were running their own e-commerce. Yeah. And what they, what they said is all, most of the dealers weren't doing a very good job because they don't have the investment, the money to, to do. So big brother Harley came in and said, Hey, we're going to, um, make this a better experience for customers. And so we built, I spent three years, uh, almost four at Harley Davidson building an entire e-commerce business you know they it's nuts i walked in the first day and it was me and two other guys in a room like on a, with a bunch of whiteboards and it's like oh. these are the roles we need to hire and build this team and, and eventually we, you know we found some vendors and partners to kind of build this thing out and wow i imagine that was a pretty big project right it's huge yeah, yeah. it was to this day is probably still the most fun i ever had you know wow. worked really hard but you know, some of those guys are still my best friends in the world. That's and awesome, man. We get together, you know, usually once a year, go to a baseball game. Did you get a Harley yeah. out of it or what? <laughs> out of it. I ended up buying one. Oh, there you go. Yeah. There you go. Okay. Even, they, you know, they, they didn't really I, – I tried. I was like, can, can we work out a deal where I just get one? And yeah. It's <laughs> impossible to let that happen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, But, yeah, I yeah, really became kind of ingrained in that culture and ended up buying a V-Rod and – <laughs> that's awesome, man. That's awesome. I love that thing. <laughs> are you uh, are you a car guy at all or no? Uh, a little bit. A little bit. I, you know, I'd, I'd, I have a, I drive a Maxima, a new Maxima, which hey. is a fun car. Yeah. Uh, more on the tech on the inside. Sure. Of it. Yeah. <laughs> um, getting out of my family days, I guess, because my girls are getting older. Yeah. So yeah. I'm looking forward to when I can get a sports car again. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Uh, cool. There you Harley go. will do for now. <laughs> yeah. Dude, if my wife would let me, I would get it Harley in a second, man. That's the thing too. But kids are young, so I'll wait. You know, <laughs> it is. Yeah. It's probably not a good choice for me. Yeah. And I'm a I'm a speed demon as well. So. Yeah, it can. It can be a, a ton of fun. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, Austin's a little bit hot in the summertime yeah. to ride. You know, especially as much traffic as we have. Now. Yeah, I mean, you're sitting on an engine, so <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that that mixes with uh, 105 humi- and you know 100 percent humidity, pretty much. Yeah. Well, the 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 V rod is a little bit different from other Harleys. I don't know you know much about the the bikes that they have but yeah the the v-rod is a it was a collaboration with porsche and so it's like oh, the porsche shoot. water-cooled engine hmm. uh, so that was kind of cool yeah that's awesome man it's the fastest bike that harley makes nice it's, it's it can fly it's i bet cool. man that's oh, awesome cool man. yeah well um, yeah so uh, i think we're gonna wrap it up so um i think we had talked about there's uh, gonna be a little bit of a promo going on for for the event uh so if you want to talk about that and kind of Give yeah, them yeah. The lowdown. So we, uh, Joe and I, kind of went to the drawing board and are running promotion: hundred bucks off. 
Yeah. Right? Using um, code CONTENT at checkout, and you just go to ecombash.com. Again, ecombash.com, E-C-O-M-M-B-A-S-H.com. And uh, if you're watching on YouTube, we'll put a link in the bio um, or a link in the description and uh, use code CONTENT. So again, anyone interested in e-commerce or if you have some success in e-commerce but you want to scale up mm-hmm. or you're a full-fledged, you know, mature business, there's going to be uh, yep. e-com business, there's going to be some value for you. And I know, I, I, I know there's a lot of great speakers there. I'll speak for myself though and say that I'm going to be an open book, giving away as much info yeah. as possible on the clients that we're allowed to talk about and some of the success stories we've seen um, and how content can can completely change your e-com yeah. business. And so that's what I'm looking forward to. Yeah, and it is it is a limited seating event. So yeah, just so 350. You guys know. And yeah. I think we've yeah. we're almost a third of the way sold. So. Um, and we, tickets just went on sale like what a week ago. Very recently, yeah. 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 I've been kind of late getting them out there, but mm-hmm. again, so it's October eighth through the tenth, right? October in 8th Austin, the 10th. Texas. Yep. So again, ecombash dot com. Um, head over there and uh, and get the tickets. And prices are going up too, right? Uh, yeah, kind of making it so every fifty tickets sold, the price goes up a hundred bucks. So mm-hmm. kind of it, it helps reward people who are early acting. Yeah. Yep. And uh, from a conference perspective, it helps because you have that money to kind of put back into the event. Yeah, for sure. Those, yeah. For sure. So get those uh, early bird deals. Yeah, for sure. Early bird uh, uh, doesn't early get bird to warm this time. <laughs> <You know. So laughs> anyways, awesome. well, thanks, Joe. I appreciate you. Joe flew up here for this podcast. So I did. Um, yeah, I appreciate you and coming up, man. Get to hang out with you oh, guys. For sure. Yeah, it's been, sure. we, we got some <laughs> drinks last <laughs> night and it was fun, man. Great so time. awesome. Um, all right, Joe. Appreciate cool. you, man. All right. We'll see you guys again soon. Yeah. All right. Cool. Cool. Thanks. Thanks.